the better thing to chase, the better question to try and answer is for whom are you looking? That will give you some gutsy stuff for life. I've already declared that Jesus is risen and although it denies the natural order of life and death, those people who were at the grave site that, those years ago bothered to go on and witness to what they had seen and they had experienced and they had heard of this Jesus who was now resurrection. It denies, it confounds all of natural history in the process of life and death. But here it was in front of them, bare as it could be, as real as it could be on that first Sunday. And they dared to go and tell others about it. And I believe that the resurrection story was what Peter was relaying on that day to Cornelius and his household in that Acts 10 report that Kevin read for us. But it didn't come without confronting some of the norms in life that Peter was involved in. You see, Peter was not at a synagogue preaching to the faithful, preaching to God's chosen ones. He was in a Roman centurion's house. And that was everything against the comfort zone of being a Jew. And it certainly was a sin to be in their presence. And so Peter confronted some of the familiar, just as those, those Marys and those disciples did, were confronted with the resurrection that morning. And, Pear, and Peter, in sharing at the Roman cent, centurion's home, had the penny drop for him. He'd had some dreams, and he'd been convicted by God that he should go into that. And the revelation that was in, read in Acts 10.34 this morning God has no favourites. Dropped like a, a coin into a money box. God has no favourites. All people everywhere are acceptable to our God. And then he began to tell the story of the resurrected Jesus to those foreigners. And if we read on into chapter 11, verse uh, 30, somewhere out there, you go and have a look for it, 15 I think it might be, that we read that Holy Spirit fell on the foreigners. Holy Spirit had only ever been expected to fall on the Jews, the chosen ones. But now, Holy Spirit was to fall on the ungodly. What a shock. And it seems to me that the resurrection challenges the church today to consider how God's spirit might be moving us to bring the new life of the resurrected Jesus into the community.